Now we will calculate electric field intensity due to a charged long conductor. This conductor is very long, let us say infinitely long on both sides. Then how can we measure the charge? I told you in the previous lectures that whenever we have a charge distribution in the length, then we do not use the term total charge on the conductor. We use the term charge per unit length and this conductor has a charge per unit length and fixed symbol for that is lambda. So lambda is the charge on this, lambda charge per unit meter that is uh, charge density, linear charge density lambda, lambda coulomb per meter. Okay. Now there is a point P at a normal distance at a normal distance r and we are supposed to find out electric field at this point you know the problem we don't have formula q upon r square to be applied here because q is not a point charge q the complete charge is not located here so we can't use this formula 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught q upon r square because this Q is not here, it is distributed and from here R is different, electric field will be on this side. For because of this R is very long, electric field will be on this side. So this formula fails, but we have no other formula. So what do we do? Here we will apply Gauss theorem and that will make it very easy. Let us start with step number 1. If you don't remember steps 1, 2, 3, 4, please see the previous lecture. In that I have given in detail and you have noted it. So according to step number 1, we have to imagine, we have to consider a Gaussian surface and the condition for Gaussian surface is symmetry. So for this, what will be the symmetrical surface? Answer is if I wrap it with a cylinder, this I wrap it, see this way. Now all the points of this are at fixed distance, R, R, R and at every point electric field will be same. So if I take a surface like this, E will be different. If I take a surface like this, E will be different. So this surface I cannot take because R is different. So I have to take this R, 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 R. What it has become? A cylinder. So a cylinder is the best symmetrical surface for a straight or linear charge distribution. So I make that cylinder here. Now I have to make R same for this cylinder. So this I take as radius, this is axis and similar R on this side. So this, this, right. And here I have to close it because this is a closed surface. So I close it this way. So this is a drum shaped surface. Yes. This is a cylinder, a drum. This is axis, okay. It comes out from here like this. Hmm. So this is my Gaussian surface. At every point of this, the distance is R and what is the direction of electric field? We know that direction of electric field due to a long charge conductor is, it is given by this is electric field, this is electric field, this is electric field, this we have done in previous lecture that electric field be like a bottle brush, all the bristles going out in all the directions. If this is the conductor then this is going this way, this way, this way, this way, this way in a disc. Then second disc, third disc, fourth disc. So you will see there is one symmetry. What is symmetry? This point of the surface, 
this is the surface this point of the surface this point this point all are at a distance r because the distance is same electric field will be symmetrical whatever is the electric field but it will be symmetrical at all the points right so that is what we have achieved with this now where is the angle a this is surface area and normal to this is area vector ds c the angle between two is zero if we make it here then this is area vector this is e and angle between them is zero everywhere you will find that theta is zero therefore this is perfect gaussian surface yes you have an objection that this surface is also part of the closed surface and this for this area vector is here this is area vector ds and here what is the direction of electric field this this is electric field this is area vector and here the angle is 90 degree and here the angle is zero so it is not symmetrical okay i agree but i have no other way if you ask me to make a sphere i make a sphere like this but this is not at all symmetrical because this point it at this r this is at this r this is at this r everywhere electric field is different here everywhere electric field is same similar so this shape is better this shape will not do and here this is theta this is electric field this is area vector this is electric field and this is area vector so every time theta is changing every time e is changing this is not at all symmetrical surface for this distribution for linear distribution so it is not useful for us so remember for linear charge distribution but then you will say what about this my answer to this is when we cannot imagine one surface which is completely symmetrical then we divide our gaussian surface into two surfaces so that each surface has got separate symmetry each surface have separate symmetry but they do have symmetry how what i mean to say consider the curved surface curved in curved surface at every point at every point mind the word every this point this point this point this point this 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 e is symmetrical at every point theta is symmetrical because here r is same here theta is equal to 0 and this is for what curved surface so complete curved surface is one symmetrical surface now for flat surface flat for this flat surface here angle is 90 here angle is 90 what is the angle here so i will say this is electric field this is area vector here again it is 90 whichever point you take at every point the angle is 90 because this is electric field and this is area vector at every point so at every point it is 90 so there is a symmetry flat surface at every point at every point theta is equal to 90 if theta is equal to 90 and we know that flux is e ds cos theta if this is 90 the flux will become zero so at every point the flux is zero so we don't have to do much calculation so such type of surfaces are very convenient for calculation because we don't have to do anything with that so 
but what i mean to say that we take this complete surface as a gaussian surface when it comes to calculation we will do our calculation in two parts one for the curved surface because curved surface has a symmetry and one for the flat surface because flat surface again has symmetry this is what i told you in the previous lecture that if we are uh, compelled that one surface we are not getting which is symmetrical we will divide our surface into two parts each part should have a separate symmetry but every point should be symmetrical in that part so in curved every point has symmetry in flat every point has symmetry so purposely i have divided it into three surfaces one curved one flat top one flat bottom so when i am doing calculation of flux i will make the calculation in three parts and how i will write it so now we come to writing it first first we have to take what is the our imagination of uh, gaussian surface in minimum words we take a p lies on the surface this okay now i have to explain why i have taken it e at every point curved surface is zero and every point of flat surface is 90 so this is my step 1 i have described what is my closed surface okay now we come to second point our second point is to calculate closed integral e ds which is equal to closed integral e ds cos theta this closed integral now i divide into three surfaces and i will add three integrals so first will be for curved surface then top flat and then bottom flat okay you can give it any short name i am writing full name you can write it any short symbols whatever you like so for curved surface i will calculate e ds cos theta for top flat e ds cos 90 for bottom flat e ds cos 90 now you see bottom flat top flat and curved this makes a complete surface top bottom curved this is complete so that is why i have replaced this with complete this means complete and complete has got these three parts so this calculation is equal to this calculation of flux now we come here so this is how we do the calculation when there are more than one symmetries if there are four symmetries we will divide it into four surfaces and take the flux of each one okay so here cos 0 is equal to 1 e is constant at every point of curved surface so e comes out and integration will be for ds for curved surface plus cos 90 is 0 cos 90 is 0 and this is equal to closed integral ds how much is this surface area for this surface area let us consider one quantity that is this length let this length be equal to l from this point to this point let this be l l so what is the area this is r this is 2 pi r and this is l so 
the total area will be 2 pi r l and this is e. Integration is done. So, closed integral e d s in this case is equal to e into 2 pi r l. So, we will keep it here. Now, we take third step. What was our third step? Third step was charge within the surface. Charge within the surface, see? This charge is outside our Gaussian surface. This charge is inside the Gaussian surface. How do we measure it? We know the answer. What is lambda? Lambda is charge on 1 meter. How many meter is the conductor inside it? L meter. So, how much will be charge on that? That charge Q is equal to lambda into L. In 1 meter lambda, in L meter, L into lambda. This is the charge which is within the surface. Rest of the charge is outside and we do not have to take it. Now, step number 4. Step number 4, apply Gauss theorem. We will write here applying Gauss theorem. What is Gauss theorem? Closed integral EDS. Please write it once. Uh, do not only this much. Write this also. Is equal to Q upon epsilon naught. And also that write putting values. Putting values. Here closed integral EDS has the value e into 2 pi r l. So, I will write here e into 2 pi r l is equal to q. How much is q? Lambda into l. Lambda into l q upon epsilon naught. Upon epsilon naught. Do not forget it. So, now I have to find out e. l l is cancelled and e is equal to electric field intensity is lambda upon 2 pi epsilon naught into r. This is lambda upon 2 pi epsilon naught into r. This. So, this is measurement of E. What should be given to us? What is the charge density of the conductor? and how much is the distance. We will find out E and this formula we got with Gauss theorem's help. If you want to get it by Coulomb's law that Q upon R square, it is a longer, much longer process. But by Gauss theorem, we have done it only into this much, one, two, three steps and we got this electric field. This is a very important derivation and normally it is asked in the examinations. So, you must remember it and what you will remember for straight line there has to be a cylinder. In cylinder two symmetries are combined one for curved one for flat. So, we do calculation in three steps one for curved one for top flat one for bottom flat and this technique you should get acquainted with that a closed can be done by three different surfaces so that this is the complete surface calculation and we have applied those four steps what you have remembered. So, now in the next lecture we will see how we will find out electric field due to another shape at that shape is the infinite ball filled with charges. So, what will be the electric field due to that that we will do in the next class. Thank you.